everyone. I'm here with my associate Vivian Sui today, and we'll be talking about 3D echocardiography acquisition, cropping, and case examples. Here are my disclosures, some speaking work for Philips, and some review work for AGA Medical, and we do have some grant support. The topics we'll be discussing today will be 3D echo acquisition modalities, cropping modalities, image optimization, multiplanar modes, some case examples, some final comments, and then we will review the quiz. The goals will be that you should be able to apply the four acquisition modalities, the three cropping modalities, and be familiar with methods to optimize your 3D images. This is mostly focused towards the Philips product as that's the one which is most readily available that I'm the most familiar with. There are four acquisition modalities. They are chosen from the right touch panel in the top region, and they include live 3D, X-Plane, full volume, and 3D zoom, and we'll talk about all of these in sequence and in detail. Each has their own strengths and limitations and their own best applications. They're chosen just simply by touching one of the icons in the right touch panel. So live 3D imaging is involving a 3D wedge with adjustable size, shape, and position. The user defines the size, shape, and position, and it's very important to optimize those settings. In general, it has the fastest volume rate. It's important to position the structure of interest in the mid to the far field where the sector is the largest. This live 3D acquisition modality works very well for the aortic valve, ventricular septal defects, and the left atrial appendage. The second commonly used 3D echo acquisition modality is 3D full volume. This involves a large volumetric pyramid of 3D data. It requires extensive post-acquisition cropping and quantitation. It's prone to stitch artifact, and it does require cropping, and we will talk about ways to mitigate the stitch artifact and optimize the cropping. Full volume can be used to include the entire heart structures, excluding some of the great vessels. 3D zoom is the third of the acquisition modalities. 3D zoom is a truncated 3D pyramid which has adjustable size and position. It works very well for horizontally oriented structures. It tends to have a very slow volume rate. Volume rate is the same as frame rate. In 3D we say volume rate and 2D you're all familiar with the frame rate. So I may interchange those two terms, but I'm meaning the same thing. HBR is a setting on a 3D opt button which we'll talk about. That's high volume rate. So that setting can mitigate some of the slow volume rates that one encounters with 3D zoom in particular. 3D zoom modality to acquire 3D images is excellent for AV valves and for atrial septal defects. And the fourth of the acquisition modalities is X-plane, which consists of simultaneous adjustable biplane 2D in color. Just as the interventional cath physicians have biplane angiography, we now have live biplane echocardiography with 2D and color. It's excellent for anatomy, for measurements, for viewing jets, and for saving time because we can get two pictures simultaneously. So each of these techniques has some strengths and limitations which we have indicated in the table here. Live 3D, it has a high volume rate. It's fast. It's good for fast moving structures. And it is actual real time. What you see on the screen, that heartbeat is what is actually happening at that particular moment. Live 3D, however, you have to keep the sector size small in order to achieve that faster frame rate. So Live 3D is very directed. You must adjust size and position and view aspect of the Live 3D sector to optimize its applicability and usefulness. Full volume has the high volume rates. We usually will use a four beat acquisition and has a very large sample volume, but it is prone to stitch artifact and it requires cropping. 3D zoom provides excellent on pause views of horizontally aligned structures such as AV valves and the atrial septum. And it is like live 3D modality, it is actual live real time. However, it can have slow volume rates, which you can mitigate somewhat using the HBR. X-Plane, the fourth of the acquisition modalities, it's live, you can have 2D in color, but it's not full 3D, it's only biplane 2D. Now, color Doppler can be added to any of these modalities. Color Doppler tends to decrease the frame rate or the volume rate considerably. And so that's a very important consideration, especially in smaller children where the heart rate is very fast. In adults where the heart rate is significantly slower, the actual 3D 
color Doppler is somewhat more useful. X-plane color Doppler is very, very useful. We'll show examples of that. Let's talk about each of the four acquisition modalities in more detail. Live 3D, it is very important. I want to hammer this point home. Very important to adjust the size, the position, and the view. Just like on 2D, if you zoom in on a structure or you are adjusting the color Doppler sample volume size, you want it just the right size and just the right position so that you're maximizing your frame rate and resolution. The size of the sector is adjusted using your lateral and elevation width controls, which is on the right touch panel and the knobs immediately beneath it. To adjust the position, that is to steer the sample volume, you use the touch keys and the trackball. We can steer that sample volume laterally, that is from the left to right of the screen, using the lateral control. And you steer it into and out of the screen, that's that extra Z plane or elevation plane, which you get with 3D Echo, the into and out of the screen plane. That's what you adjust with your elevation position. And then you can, of course, adjust using the touch keys and trackball which side of the 3D sample volume you want to view from. Because there are times when we'll want to look at it from the side or occasionally even from the bottom. Very important to adjust those controls. And we'll go into this in a little more detail. Adjusting the width, you know, the size of the live 3D sector we toggle between either the lateral width control or the elevation width control, and we use this knob that is the second one from the right, just beneath the right touch panel. So we want to optimize our 3D sample volume to exclude tissue we're not interested in and only include tissue which we are interested in. Likewise, we want to adjust the position of that 3D sample volume to cone down and focus on specific structures that we're interested in. And we toggle between lateral position, elevation position, and rotation control by using the touch keys. And once a particular one is selected and highlighted, we'll adjust that using the trackball. And this slide basically summarizes the last two slides. I put it in here just to emphasize very clearly that you want to control lateral width and position and elevation width and position. Optimize your 3D sample volume size and position so that you don't have to do cropping hardly at all, if ever and that you are maximizing your volume rate and your resolution. Typically with Live 3D, we will use almost always a one beat 3D offsetting, a one beat per beat acquisition. Occasionally we'll use two beats, but most of the time and the default setting for Live 3D acquisition is a one beat actual real-time live acquisition. Here's a nice example of a 3D TEE of an aortic valve. None of the pictures I'm going to show you today were photoshopped. These are things that are right off the machine or right out of QLab, you know, with no cheating at all. And Live 3D, basically, to get a picture like this, all you need to do is to get the mid-esophagus transesophageal view, dial in your aortic valve short axis 2D view between 30 and 60 degrees, optimize your 2D view, and then launch Live 3D and adjust your sample volume size and position, and you should be able to get beautiful views of the aortic valve just like this. So this is a modality and a method that I would recommend very highly, especially on 3D TEE, to get these beautiful cross-sectional 3D views of the aortic valve. Okay, let's get to our second acquisition modality, full volume 3D, and talk about it in more detail. So for live 3D, we use a one-beat acquisition. For full volume in children, we are almost always using a four-beat acquisition. It's the best balance between resolution and frame rates. Occasionally, we use the high volume rate on the 3D offsetting. Okay. If you have an older version of QLab on your machine or on your workstation, you may notice that HVR images, you cannot measure ventricular volumes. Okay, later versions you can, earlier versions you cannot. So make sure you check that, that if you're using full volume 3D to do an LV or an RV volume, make sure that if you are using the HVR setting that you have a version of the software that will be able to do that. If you're 10 or 11 or greater, then I believe you're okay. If you're 9 or earlier, I believe that's the cutoff where you have to use a 4D and you cannot use that HVR. So just keep that in mind. Full volume 3D is that large volume imaging. You can include all or mostly all of the heart. However, it requires cropping. It provides for the capabilities of extensive post-acquisition quantitation, especially RV and LV volume. 
And in fact, for a number of the quantitative programs, you must do a full volume 3D. It will not work with live or Zoom. So it must be cropped. You have to apply one of the cropping methods, which we'll get to next, and that's eye crop or what we call the X, Y, Z, and the adjustable plane cropping. Now, the problem with full volume 3D is that it's prone to stitch artifact, so you have to be careful and you have to use these tools to mitigate against that. You should use the three-panel MPR display and check the lateral panel, and we'll go over this in detail for you. You should keep this acronym in mind, FLIRT, freeze, loop, replay, trim, acquire. When you're doing your 3D full volume acquisitions, don't hit the acquire button first. Hit the freeze, and then we'll go through the sequence, loop, replay, and trim, so that we're going to acquire only single RR intervals at a time, one or two of them, and only the best ones, the ones that are free of stitch artifact and of high resolution. The other thing that's important in doing your full volume acquisition is breath holding. If you can have the patient hold their breath, or if you're in the OR cath lab, have anesthesia hold that patient's breath to eliminate the stitch artifact that can be caused with respiratory movement. This is this three-panel MPR display. You choose this at the left touch panel. This is really very important in terms of getting a stitch-free and adequate-sized 3D full-volume acquisition. Most importantly, you'll look in this lateral panel here. So what this 3D three-panel MPR is, is this is the 3D full-volume view. Notice also, this is another something to keep in mind, if it's 3D full-volume, it will be displayed in a green box. If it's not in a green box, it is not 3D full volume. So as I was saying, if you're planning to do an LV or an RV volume calculation, make sure when you're acquiring it, you see that green box to assure that you're doing the full 3D full volume acquisition. So it, with this three-panel MPR, we'll see the 3D here. Down here in the left lower, this is our reference 2D image where we started. Okay, this is like we're looking at the front of the 3D volume, and this is the lateral view. This is like we're looking at the side of the 3D volume. So the crucial aspects that you see in this lateral panel, this is where you will see stitch artifact, and this is where you will see, for example, in this particular case, it's an AV canal. We want to make sure here the complete annulus of the common AV valve is seen in both the AP and the lateral views. So this lower right panel, the lateral panel in the 3MPR display is crucial to make sure, number one, your sample size is adequate, that you have your entire structure of interest contained in the sample volume, and number two, that you do not have stitch artifact. So when you're doing your 3D full volumes, you should always, acquisitions, you should always do this. There's a little button right next to this one that is this 3D one only, the fat pyramid only. If you touch that, then it will have only the 3D display, and you can just toggle between the two as you need. But when you are acquiring the image, it's very important to be in this mode, the 3D three-panel MPR mode. And here I'm just reiterating and emphasizing the same thing. For example, here we're looking at the LV and the mitral valve. We want to make sure that in our reference image and in our lateral, if it's the AP here, and in the lateral image that the entire mitral valve annulus and the entire LV is included in both panels, and that there's no stitch artifact. You'll see the stitch artifact in this lateral panel right here. Here's where I was talking about. You can choose between a 3D-only display, which would show you this one, or the three-panel MPR, which would show you this one. And this is what you want to use during the acquisition phase. Make sure you have the green box, and make sure your sample volume is of appropriate size and does not include stitch artifact. Okay, FLIRTA. This is the sequence that we use to choose only one or two single RR intervals where we'll throw out all of the beats that aren't the best beats. The advantage of this is, number one, it's going to improve your observer variability because you'll all be measuring your volumes on the same beats. Number two is, when you do the 3D acquisition, it often saves 10 or 20 beats. You don't need 10 or 20 beats of 3D volume data. The data sets are very large. You'll take up all the storage space on your PAC system. You don't need to do that. You only need to save one or two of the best beats when you're doing your 3D full volume acquisitions. And this is the sequence that you should go through to do that. Okay. Remember to use the three up MPR panel. And when you have your beautiful 3D picture up there, hit freeze, not acquire. Freeze is a button on the main control panel. Once you hit freeze, look at your left touch panel. 
up at the top, and what you'll notice is loop. You touch loop, and then you'll touch replay. And then on your large screen, what you'll see is your 3D full volume beats scrolling in front of you, 10 or 20 of them. You use these controls here, and you'll bracket these little L brackets. They'll be superimposed over the EKG up on your big screen, and you pick out one RR interval at a time and make sure the image quality is good, there's no motion artifact, there's no stitch artifact, and then you hit acquire. And then it will acquire only that best RR interval and nothing else. And so typically we'll take two of those. And most of the time, it's important to make sure that you allow the machine a chance to catch up, let it go through 10 or 20 beats, and by and large, you're going to be selecting one of the RR intervals that's just at the end or very close to the end. So don't hit acquire immediately. Hit freeze, loop, replay, watch them scroll in front of you, use the knobs to bracket one RR interval, the best RR interval, probably get one more after that, and one at a time you'll hit acquire then, okay? It'll save you time and space, and you'll all be measuring the same volumes on the same optimized beats. So Florida, freeze, loop, replay, trim left, and trim right, and then acquire. Okay, now we're getting to the third of the acquisition modalities, discussing them more in detail. We've talked about live. We've talked about 3D full volume. Now this is 3D zoom. So 3D zoom is a user-defined sample size and position like live 3D is. It tends to have very slow volume rates. I don't know the physics of it, but it's quite true that it's almost always has some of the slowest volume rates that you'll encounter. Sometimes you can use the HBR mode on the 3D offsetting, and it will improve your volume rate significantly. However, usually when you use the HBR modality, you will notice a degradation in the resolution. So you have to consider the balance between slow frame rates and resolution. 3D zoom is excellent for AV valves and atrial septum. In fact, we hardly use it for anything else and in fact, it's our first choice in our experience for AV valves and atrial septum, especially in the constraints of the cath lab and the operating room, you know, when your time is limited. So it's really good for AV valves, excellent for atrial septum. We don't use it for a whole lot more than that. There's a sequence that you will go through. You will get your optimized 2D image, then you hit 3D zoom, and then you will adjust the sample volumes in the left and the right panels. Then you hit 3D zoom again, and you get this very peculiar-looking sample volume. Basically, what we're doing here is we're looking at it from the side. The key information is on the top and the bottom. And so you're going to have to flip it up or down, and you're going to have to rotate it into anatomic position to show the surgeon or the cath doctor the structure of interest with the appropriate anatomic orientation. So 3D zoom, slow volume rates, great for AV valves, great for ASD, works excellent for horizontal structures quite easy and fast to use. Here's the sequence that I was referring to. So here we're looking at the mitral valve. So in number one, we have an optimized view, of a transesophageal you know, mid-four chamber view, optimized 2D view, and then we hit the 3D zoom button up there on the right touch panel, and these two pictures come up with these superimposed sample volumes. First you adjust this sample volume here over the mitral valve, and then you go to the lateral and adjust the sample volume width here, okay, adjusting those using the track ball and those touch keys down there on the main control panel. Then when you touch 3D zoom again, you get your peculiar 3D zoom sample volume like this, and you're looking at it from the side. So as I was saying, you want to flip it up or flip it down. In this case, it's the mitral valve, and we're going to grab the front of this and use our 3D rotate and just flip the front of this down. And what you see is the mitral valve here, LA appendage and aorta. And then we'll rotate this around either with a trackball or with the rotate Z knob. And we'll get the aorta oriented at noon and the left atrial appendage at 9.30 or 10 o'clock. And this is the appropriate anatomic orientation. So this is what the surgeon would see. You know, surgical approach is from the back and they go through the atrial septum or the posterior wall of the left atrium and look at the mitral valve this way. So this would be the anatomically correct orientation for the surgeon to look at intraoperatively when he's inspecting the mitral valve before any treatment. And so here's a zoomed up view of that mitral valve. And this particular case has prolapse of P1 and P2 and P3 scallops. So the scallops are numbered 1, 2, 3 from lateral to medial. 
but you have to remember that there's A1, A2, A3, and here we very clearly see P1, P2, P3. Oftentimes you cannot see three distinct scallops for both anterior and posterior mitral valve leaflets, but theoretically you should be able to, and they're numbered from lateral to medial, from left to right, once you have the valve oriented correctly. Okay, so we finished three of them. Now this is the fourth and the last of the 3D acquisition modalities, X-plane. X-plane is simultaneous biplane, 2D with or without color. The standard image view, the regular 2D image that you obtain, have obtained, is displayed on your left. And once you launch the X-plane, there's an adjustable or generated view that's shown to your right. And on the right, we can adjust that view by adjusting the line of dissection going through our reference image and we can tilt or rotate it just like the catheterizers do in the cath lab where how they adjust the AP and lateral camera tilt and rotation. So we're doing the same thing well, with that lateral or generated image displayed on the right with echo. It's time saving in that you can show two views at once. You can get your long axis or short axis or four chamber or two chambers simultaneously. And it's excellent for looking at color Doppler jets because we get two views of the jet on the same heartbeat at the same time. Also, it's very excellent for accurately measuring structures such as valve annulus because you know you can get it aligned in two planes and measure it on the same heartbeat at the same time on the same frame from two different views. So here's some nice views of the X-plane. Here's a case with mitral insufficiency. Here I talked about the line of dissection or line of bisection. You just steer this line here with the trackball. So it defaults right in the middle, but you can put it anywhere or steer it anywhere you need to you know, along this 2D sector. And this demonstrates what you would see if you're looking at the side when you just cut this line through here and peel this away. So this is the frontal view and the lateral view of our 2D picture of a case with mitral insufficiency. And here you see the jet is not really so wide, but here the jet of mitral insufficiency is quite wide. And so it's nice to look at the view of the jet from the front and the side all at the same time, live beating heart. Here are some examples of aortic valve insufficiency. You see we have the short axis and the long axis simultaneously. And here's our deep transgastric views you know, with our standard LDOT coronal view and sagittal view, you'll see at the same time. So this is a great way to look at jets. And I do this quite a lot. I don't actually use, especially in the operating room and in the cath lab where your time is limited, I do not use so much 3D color. I use a lot more X-plane color than 3D color. I think that there's some technological improvements that need to happen, especially in children when the heart rates are fast. In adults, the heart rates are slower. The 3D color is more useful. In smaller kids where the heart rate is consistently greater than 100, you know, sometimes 150, then oftentimes the best views of the color jets are shown with X-plane rather than 3D. A quick and excellent way to show on fast views of ventricular septal defect is with this X-plane imaging. So, for example, here's a four-chamber esophageal view. This is a patient with a post-MI VSD, post-pericardial infarction muscular VSD. If you put your line of dissection right through here, you see my little blue marker? This blue marker, a line extends from there up to the apex of the sector. If you put it straight down your vertically aligned septum and you look in the lateral, here's your LV side on FOSS view of that VSD. So this is so quick and easy to use, you can apply this on all of your patients, even the active little babies. Get the four-chamber view, align your septum vertically, a launch X-plane, put the line straight through the ventricular septum, and look in the lateral panel, and you should see your LV side on FOSS view of the VSD. So here's the 2D only and the color, you know, our frontal view and our lateral view, or if you will, a two-chamber view, and here are the, I'm sorry, four-chamber views here and here, and two-chamber views here and here. It's also excellent for looking at residual shunts after device closures of ASD and VSD. X-plane with color. Here's my short axis view and the long axis view, okay, the bicable view after an amplancer device simultaneously. So not only does it show you nice pictures in frontal and lateral, but it saves you time because you've got two pictures at once. I don't have to get this one first and then rotate it 90 degrees more to get this picture. They're up there simultaneously. Okay, 
I think we're to the point of some questions here. We didn't talk about these specifically, but there are very important points to note. Here's the question. Additional 3D data can be added to the data set after the image has been acquired. Okay, After you've hit the acquisition button, additional 3D data can be added using which of the following modalities? So think about this, and I'll wait for your answers, and then we'll go over what the correct answer is. Okay, so the question is, additional 3D data can be added to the data set after the image has been acquired using which of the following modalities? And the correct answer is none of the above. Once you've hit the acquisition button, that's what you have for that particular acquisition. Now you can go back immediately and you can expand the sample volume size or let's say change from a small sector imaging like live 3D and 3D zoom to big sector imaging like 3D full volume and do another acquisition. But once you hit the acquisition button, you can't add anything to that acquisition. Whatever you've saved at that particular point in time, that's all you're going to get in terms of 3D data, okay? All right, and one more question at this point in time. Color Doppler flow mapping can be added to which of the following acquisition modalities? So this is before we've hit the acquire button. You're still in the process of adjusting your images before you acquire them. Okay, to which of the modalities can we add color? Live, zoom, full volume, explain. Okay, so the correct answer is all of the above. You can add color to any of the acquisition modalities. At this point in time, it works very well with X-Plane. If your heart rate is not too fast, then 3D full volume color is pretty good but not great. If your heart rate is fast, it just doesn't track there very well and it's very prone to stitch artifact. But you can add color to any or all of them. One other thing that X-Plane is very good for is the left atrial appendage. You know, looking for clots in all of our atrial flutter patients. You know, for the LA appendage, sometimes you can only get a nice clear view of it in one particular spot with one particular transducer orientation. But the advantage of X-Plane is I can just put my X-Plane line right through here, right through my reference image, and get the orthogonal image of the same heartbeat, you know, right at the same time. You know, to both save time and to take advantage of that one particular echo sweet spot that you have where I don't have to adjust my transducer, I can just add an additional view by using the X-Plane. So it's quite useful looking for clots in the LA appendage, yeah, you know, TEE, in our ever-growing population of atrial flutter patients, especially the adult congenital patients. Okay, so we've talked about acquisition modalities, live, full volume, zoom, and X-Plane. Now we're talking about cropping modalities. These are the ways that we dissect away echo data that we don't want to reveal the echo data that we're most interested in. And there are three cropping modalities, and they are XYZ cropping, adjustable plane cropping, and I-crop. I-crop is the newest one. XYZ is probably what most of you are already familiar with. XYZ cropping is when we can launch the cropping tool, the heart is placed in the yellow cube, and we can crop from the front, the back, the top, the bottom, and the right, and the left, any or all of them. And whatever we crop away, we can put back, too. Adjustable plane is what we use when there is a structure of interest that is oriented obliquely. Because the XYZ cropping, that basic cropping modality, will crop only in the X, Y, and Z planes. We cannot angle it. We cannot make it cut obliquely. That's why they developed the adjustable plane cropping. It's sterile, infinitely adjustable crop plane. And we can have multiple crop planes if needed. Let's say it's a tetralogy where the apex is turned way up, the septum is quite oblique in our four-chamber transesophageal view, then we may want to use adjustable plane cropping to develop the on phos views of the VSD. Now, the best cropping, in my opinion, and the newest is this I-crop, where there is a cube-shaped cropping tool, and it has adjustable size, position, orientation, and view aspect. We can size it and orient it and position it and steer it all around, pick which side of the box we want to look from. And this can be applied to live images in the OR or the cath lab when the patient is not moving and you can control the respiration. Or more practically, in the live breathing patient, you'll want to go through your full volume acquisition and the Florida method and to pull it up immediately and then put the eye cry on because, you know, the babies and the older children who are moving and breathing have difficulty holding still. 
So I think the iCrop is the best current option, especially in the cath lab and the OR. Now, keep this in mind, though, that when you're using live 3D or 3D zoom acquisition modalities, you want to size and position those sample volumes appropriately so that you don't have to do any cropping. Large majority of the cropping you're going to need to do will be on full volume acquisitions, not on live 3D or 3D zoom. Live 3D, 3D zoom, you cone in, you focus, you adjust size and position and acquire it that way so that you don't have to do any cropping. You'll get more familiar with this when we show the case examples. So all the cropping modalities are available on the machine or on this software called QLab. Most people will have QLab on the machine also, and you may have it on your reading station or on a stand-alone computer. The functionality is the same, the nomology is different, and they both have all the same functions. Okay, so here are some cropping guidelines. As I said, for Zoom and Live, you rarely need cropping. Adjust it beforehand. Full volume, you must crop. Eye crop currently is the most useful. XYZ, an adjustable plane, is still useful. It's the old tried and true standard methods that still come in very handy and it's still are occasionally the best. X plane is that biplane 2D with or without color. It cannot be cropped. Okay, no cropping for X plane. You can crop zoom and live, although you shouldn't need to, or very rarely need to. Full volume, you have to crop it all the time. Okay, so XYZ and adjustable plane cropping. This is the older cropping method that I think most of you are quite familiar with. When you launch these modalities, the heart comes up in this yellow cube, and whichever side you're cropping from, the active cropping side, will be highlighted in purple so you know which side you're cropping from. And it's always set up this way, where the red plane is the lateral, that's cropping from the right and the left. The green plane, that's the new plane that 3D Echo provides, that's the front to back, or elevation, or AP cropping. The cropping into and out of the screen, that's the Z plane, the new 3D plane, it's encoded in green. And then the vertical plane, or the Y axis, is encoded in blue. So you can crop from any or all sides if you've done your 3D acquisition properly. You can even add back whatever you have cropped off there. The adjustable plane, it comes up as a steerable plane that will be oriented obliquely, and you can steer it all around. Sometimes it's tricky and hard to steer. One side is purple and one side is green. But the adjustable plane cropping you will use for obliquely oriented structures that you are not able to show with the standard X, Y, and Z cropping. When you launch your eye crop, what happens is it defaults into this very useful, like we mentioned, the three-panel MPR with a 3D view, the frontal, that's your standard 2D image acquisition, and the lateral view. And here's our eye crop box, and we use the touch key and the track balls, and we adjust first this one and this one. Size, position, rotation can all be adjusted, and then we can either click on the side of the box which we want to view from, or if you're doing it right on the machine, on the right touch panel, there's a little touch button there where you will toggle between which side of the box you want to look from front, back, top, bottom, left, or right, and the viewer gets to choose which side of the box they want to look from. So this iCrop has many advantages and a few of the liabilities of this old combination of XYZ and adjustable plane cropping. The only issue I have with iCrop is you will notice sometimes there's some degradation in image quality with iCrop. So these limitations, I think, will go away as software continues to improve with computer processing speed continues to improve. But we are using, as time goes by, much more eye crop and much less XYZ and adjustable plane crop. As I said, you can control these on the machine with the right touch panel and the knobs immediately beneath the right touch panel. You can choose those parameters which I've just been discussing. Or if you have QLab on your machine, you could launch QLab and you can use your trackball and touch keys as a mouse and slide these things back and toggle them back and forth to do your cropping. And here's your adjustable plane cropping. Or if you like, you can even plug in a mouse. There's a USB port on your Echo machines, and you can use a mouse to control these particular settings once you've launched QLab. QLab is your only choice when you're doing your review station or your standalone computers. You will, of course, have the controls that you have available on the Echo machine. Functionality is the same. Nobology is different for those. Icrop, let's just talk about it a little bit more, 
It's that adjustable crop box where you steer position, size, shape, orientation, and view aspect using the right touch panel, the touch keys, and the trackball. You can apply it to 3D live moving or retrieved acquired images. But if they're moving a lot, it's not going to work. If the patient cannot hold still, the eye crop and live images just doesn't work very well. You have to go through your 3D full volume acquisition and use that FLIRTA acronym technique. Here is an example of eye crop applied to a 3D full volume acquisition of an AV canal or AV septal defect. This was our standard 2D view, and then we did a 3D full volume acquisition, and then we retrieved it, and we hit our eye crop button, and this automatically comes up in this, this three-panel display with the 3D, our reference 2D image, and the lateral 2D image. And the crop box is automatically displayed there right over the middle of these images when we launch the 3D eye crop tool. And what we'll do is we've chosen the eye crop. This will come up by default with the boxes. We will first adjust this box. Then there's a little button on the right touch panel that says NPR left and right. We'll toggle over to this one, and then we'll adjust size, position, or orientation of this one. Okay, and then we'll choose which side of the box we want to look from, and then we can hit our 3D only icon and look at the 3D picture. This basically is a summary of what I just told you about. We launched the iCrop, the same patient, the same picture. We've got a nice four chamber view of an AV septal defect. We hit iCrop, those panels come up, and then we focus on adjusting our iCrop box using the touch keys. And the parameter that we're adjusting is highlighted on the screen so we know which one. We toggle between these different parameters by hitting a touch key to go over to box position. Hit it again, we'll go to box size. And once whatever's highlighted, that's adjusted using the trackball. And then here is where we choose on the echo machine. It says view top. I know it's probably quite hard to see. But if I touch it again, it would say view bottom, then view right, then view left. We're choosing which side of the box we want to look from. So, for example, we can look from the atrial side to get an atrial on view of the common AV valve, from the ventricular side to get the ventricular view of the common AV valve. We can choose this side to get an on view of the ASD and the VSD, or this side and get the right on view of the ASD and VSD. So, iCrop in full volume is wonderful for AV septal defect. You can get one nice four-chamber acquisition, and you can get a tremendous amount of data and look at it many different ways and crop it many different, very good ways by using a four, 3D full volume and the iCrop tool. Here's an example of an AV septal defect or complete AV canal. And this picture of mine, I hope it's a little more clear and it's a little blurry on my screen. But here is the atrial on FOS view of a common AV valve and an AV canal defect. Here's the aorta and that they say the unsprung position. You know, usually it's wedged between the AV valves, but common AV valves, there's only one. So there's no way it can wedge. Anyway, anterior bridging leaflet, posterior bridging leaflet, and then there are three mural leaflets, two on the right and two on the left, and here's this view in motion. So this was generated with a 3D full volume acquisition and eye crop, and that should take you not even a minute to get at this particular view. Once you get your good 2D four chamber view, you can get all of this you know, very quickly, I would say at most in one minute. Image optimization. So we have talked about cropping modalities now, the three cropping modalities, XYZ, adjustable plane, and eye crop, and how we like eye crop a lot. Now just a couple of pointers in terms of making your 3D images look clean and crisp and good resolution and enhancing the 3D effect. There's two slides we have about this. First of all, gain settings. Do not have your gains too high. For the AV valves and semilunar valves, you have it a little bit higher than you would if you're looking at chambers and septa. But almost always we have the gains in the less than 50% range. Okay. If your image is brown and fuzzy and bleached out, your gain is way too high. You need to definitely turn the gain down. Similarly, brightness and compression control should be in the mid to low range. Smoothing should be in the more or less mid range. X-Res is another button on the machine and on QLab and it's quite similar to smoothing, and you should either have it toggled off or low. The other choice is mid, but we always have it either off or low. Another important thing to consider is on your 3D images, when you finally get them all cropped, or if it's a live or a zoom and you have it all aligned properly, just angle it or tilt it a little bit you know, out of the straight up 
AP and lateral planes, because what that will do is it will very much enhance this blue depth shading that is very important in displaying the 3D images. The deeper you go into the 3D image, the deeper the blue depth shading is. It gives it that holographic effect. So just angle the images a little bit or tilt them a little bit using your 3D rotate button and your trackball, and that will enhance that blue depth shading and really bring out the 3D aspects of your image. Also, limit the sample size and trim off extraneous tissue. That will maximize your volume rate, and that will maximize the effect you have on the tissues that you're interested in when you do gain and brightness and compression and smoothing adjustments. It will be only on the tissue that you're interested in, not on the lungs and liver and scar tissue which you can crop away that you're not interested in in any way. This is our slide number two for image enhancements. You always want to use the Vision H. Vision H is the 3D optimized imaging algorithm with the blue depth shading. Okay, they haven't come out with anything better than Vision H yet. I am always in Vision H. I never use anything else, with the following exception. When you launch your color modalities in 3D, it defaults to Vision A, and that's no uh, depth shading. So sometimes that will be okay when you're focusing on the color jet. But if you're focusing on the tissues of the heart, no matter what they are, I highly recommend that you use Vision H. Vision H enhances the blue depth shading. It provides the blue depth shading. There are colorized choices under Vision H. The ones you are probably most familiar with are the bronze and blue, which is two. There's a grayscale and blue, which is five. And then there's a pinkish red blue, which is eight. Eight sometimes will really bring out the blue depth shading. So 99% of the time we will be in two, five, or eight. And I would say probably 80% of the time in two, and 8% of the time in 8, and 2 or 3% of the time in 5. 3D Opt is a button that is controlled on the knobs just beneath the bottom row of the right touch panel. The 3D Opt setting is the number of beats that the software is using to create one 3D echo image. So if it is set as 1, then you are doing actual live 3D echo. The beat that is happening is the beat you're seeing on 3D. If you go to a 4-beat acquisition, and we highly recommend 4-beat acquisition when you're doing full volume, if you're going to a 4-beat acquisition, every heartbeat you see on 3D is actually a composite of the four previous heartbeats. It's taking four beats and it's stitching them together. And the software and hardware have developed that this is quite rapid. And if the patient takes a deep breath or move, or you don't move the transducer, there'll be no stitch artifact. But if that happens, if they move or breathe or cry, or the heart rate is too fast, you may see the stitch artifact. So that's why we have to do things when we're doing the full volume acquisition and a four beat acquisition to mitigate against stitch artifact. Also, I very highly recommend when you're in settings where your time is constrained and you're working with challenging personalities like interventional cath people and surgeons, you should have a two-person team. Have one person drive the transducer and one person work the machine and practice and be able to work together so that the person driving the transducer, by and large, can sort of be the captain and the person working the machine can be more or less the co-pilot image optimizer. That works very, very well, especially in those time-constrained environments. I want to mention these MPR, these multi-planar review or multi-planar reconstruction modes. These are very useful. The three panel is really important for doing your 3D full volume acquisitions. Remember, we said we were going to look here for stitch artifact and adequacy of sample volume size. The four panel display here is great for displaying complex anatomy because what you have with this four panel is this is your frontal view, your lateral view, the cross-sectional view, and your 3D reference view. And I don't know if you can see them very well, but this plane is color-coded green, this one red, and this one blue. The position of these is superimposed anatomically on your 3D reference image, so you know exactly where you're lined up. So this is very, very useful for showing anatomy and for doing quantitation. This four-panel mode can be selected on the left touch panel of the machine, or if you're on QLab, you'll hit the MPR mode button, and it will show the green frontal, 
The red is the lateral. The blue is the cross-section. This one is coded white. You can't see it very well here, but this is your 3D reference image. So you want to use this setup when you're doing complex measurements like LV volumes, ASD dimensions, that sort of thing. Oh, here's a great example of the four-panel MPR modality to measure ASD size. So you, know, you need to get precise measurements so they know what size device to use. And this is what we use to get the most precise 3D measurements of an ASD. And all of these planes are completely adjustable. You can grab these lines and you can move them back and forth. You can grab them at the end and change their angle. And what you'll do is you'll get your optimized view of an ASD in this particular circumstance. And what I'll do in the green panel is I will use the red line. I'll put it right through like a bullseye arrow right through the ASD. And I put the blue across the ASD. And then I go to the red panel and I put the green arrow like a bullseye right through the middle of the ASD. And I put the blue line across the ASD. If I do this and line it up properly right in the crosshairs, then look, I come to my blue panel, which is the cross section, and here's my beautiful on FOSS view of the ASD, and this is where I'll do my measurements. So what I want to see is that the colored lines are all right in crosshairs, right in the middle of the structure I'm interested in. And then here's my 3D image, so I can see that all my lines are lined up properly. And this is where I would do the measurements of the ASD. So this four panel MPR you'll use for measurements, and we'll use it for very nice displays of anatomy. For example, here's a great view of a patient with mitral stenosis in this four-panel view. This will be the frontal of the four-chamber, the two-chamber, the cross-section, and the 3D. Here we have it in motion. So, like, this is a great view, of, for example, in the operating room. Okay, the surgeon can see this valve four different ways all at the same time. And this happens to be the on view right down here. The left atrial on FOSS view of the stenotic, look how small the orifice is, the stenotic mitral valve. But here I could just grab this and flip it around and he could see the ventricular aspect as well. So I can rotate this 3D picture any way I want. So this is really you know, time-saving and enlightening to be able to show anatomic structures like this from all of these different views, same heartbeat all at the same time. This is a table that we developed as to whatever a particular target structure is and what our first choices for 3D modalities are. And I've told you about some of those already. I'm going to keep moving because we're running a little short on time. So let's go through examples. All of these pictures are abnormal aortic valves that were acquired using the simple live 3D with no cropping, no post-processing, you know, nothing. The simple live 3D, they are all TEEs from the mid-esophagus, and we spun to 30 or 60 degrees, got a beautiful short axis view of the aortic valve, and then launched live 3D and adjusted our gains and such and obtained these pictures. So here is the left-right fusion, and here is the right non-fusion, and here is a case with does not have a ref A. Also, this one, I kept the gains low because there's this big subaortic ridge. You see that here like a crescent moon? This one had pretty severe subaortic stenosis. And we turned the gains down to look through the valve. All of these were looking from the aorta down onto the valve, like the surgeon would be looking when they would open the aorta to do their valvuloplasty. This is one with left non-fusion and a very thick oblique raffae. And here is a case with unicuspid aortic valve that has both right non-fusion and right left fusion. And the orifice is right here. So these are quite easy to obtain, live 3D, no cropping. ASD, remember we talked about 3D zoom being excellent for atrial septal defects. We would do this is we would generate our best view from the transesophageal TEE of the ASD. This would be a reference picture. Then we launch 3D zoom and these three sample volumes come up. We adjust this one first and then this one, and then we would hit 3D zoom again, and we would get our peculiar looking sample volume, and we know in 3D zoom we have to look from the top or the bottom, so we need to either flip it up or flip it down and rotate it around. So in the case of ASD here, we take it here and we flip it up, and we rotate it around so that we have the anatomically correct view of RA on view of the ASD. So this is the ideal view to start with, 
during device closure of atrial septal defect. This is SVC, ASD, the IVC is here, the tricuspid valve is here, and the aorta is here. So we acquire that 3D zoom volume, then we need to flip it up, and then we need to rotate the SVC up into the 12 o'clock position to be anatomically correct for our RA on FOS view of the ASD. And there are landmarks. You can look these up in papers. There are several good papers about 3D TEE during ASD closure. And these are the landmarks that you need to be able to identify. And you should be able to get pictures like this on a routine basis. It works very well. Uh, ASD on FOS views using TEE with the 3D zoom method. Now, in the old days, last year, you had to first obtain this image, and then you had to flip it around, you know, grab it on one side and flip it around 180 degrees. Now there is a dual volume layout where you can see both on FOS views, the right atrial and the left atrial on FOS views simultaneously if you wanted to do that. So sometimes that's useful and time-saving because you get two views at once. Okay, and in this particular collection here of ASDs, views from 3D TEE, it shows the various types of uh, rim deficiency. Here's the ideal patient with ASD right in the center and good rims all around. Here's the very common aortic rim deficiency, not very common RPV rim deficiency, fairly common IVC rim deficiency, and fairly rare SVC rim deficiency. And these are the devices. You see the devices and hardware beautifully with 3D echo. That's one of the great advantages of 3D echo. It's very easy to look at devices and track wires and multiple wires and all sorts of things. When you have that third dimension, they're quite easy to track. So here's the commonly used Amplancer device. Here's the Helix device. Here's the newer GSO device. And you can see the anatomy quite nicely of these. Left atrial appendage. Left atrial appendage is frequently analyzed with atrial flutter patients. Many, many adult congenital patients are winding up with atrial flutter. Even things like Tetralogy of Fallot come back with atrial flutter. X-Plane is very useful, and Live 3D is very useful also. Here in the Live 3D, we can see the orifice of the atrial appendage also. So that is used to make precise measurements to possibly insert one of those devices which occlude the left atrial appendage in patients with chronic AFib flutter to prevent thrombus and subsequent embolus formation. So for the left atrial appendage, X-Plane and Live 3D work very well. You should not need to do any cropping with this. Okay, you cannot crop X-Plane. You should adjust your Live 3D so that you don't need any cropping. Fontans, for the big old type Fontans, the atrial pulmonary Fontans where they are very large, by and large you're going to need to use 3D full volume and a four bead acquisition. Because they are so large, you just can't get the entire structure in the more focused and smaller sample volumes of live and zoom you'll need a 3D full volume acquisition. So here's some examples of the very, very large old-time atrial pulmonary Fontan. Many of them wind up needing a revision to a more modern Fontan, like an extra cardiac Fontan. And just a couple more examples of that. Extra cardiac Fontan can be seen very nicely with TEE and 3D echo. Here's your X-plane, which is biplane echo. And the best way to use that in these extracardiac fontans, let's get a nice long axis view of the extracardiac fontan, and then use your trackball and use that dissection line and sweep through the long axis of the fontan and watch the short axis, and you can look for clots or leaks or anything of that sort. So get the long axis, use the trackball and explain, and you'll sweep through this way, and watch this view here will be the short axis view. You can also get very nice, we call this the fontanoscopy view. By adjusting properly the sample volume size and position, you can go from your long axis view. All you need to do, generally speaking, is increase the elevation plane a little bit and steer it forward a little bit, and you can get the entire circumference of the extra cardiac fontan, and you can look at it from the IVC end, and you can look at it at the pulmonary artery end, just like you have colonoscopy, now you have fontanoscopy. Just some more live views of fontans and the various spontaneous microcavitations. It can be quite thick and sludgy and nice example of a clot. 3D echo for AV septal defects is very nice. It shows the complex anatomy very clearly. Here's a primum ASD. This is, you know, the frontal four-chamber view. And here's the nice on FOS views, which are quite easy to obtain with 3D echo. On FOS views from the right side, 
and from the left side of a primum ASD, and just more views of ASD, primum ASD. And the ever popular cleft in the mitral valve. This is a 3D zoom acquisition. Okay, remember we said 3D zoom is great for AV valves and for atrial septal defects. And here's a nice cleft mitral valve in a primum ASD patient. Don't forget, full volume and eye crop is excellent for AV septal defects. You can put one box, size it, position it properly, and then just go around the various sides of the box and see all the important anatomy in 3D. Okay, these are pictures actually from a newborn using that technique. And this is the atrial view and the ventricular view you know, of an AV septal defect of a complete AV canal with anterior bridging leaf and a posterior bridging leaf. And here intermittently you see the strand of the atrial septum, and here you'll see the ventricular septum. So you can see how the valve is distributed over the ventricles and whether it's balanced or not balanced. And you see the leaflet surfaces themselves too. And of course, unbalanced AV canals are fairly common. And here's an example of a right dominant and a left dominant type especially in the heterotaxy syndrome. And here's a view of an unbalanced AV canal, an on view looking from the atria on the unbalanced AV septal defect. Here's the small LA side and the large RA side. And you see the AV valve here is all directed. The opening is almost entirely into the right ventricle. This is a quick review of some of the sequences which we've already talked about and recommended. If we want to do 3D full volume plus eye crop, we have our optimized 2D picture. We're going to go to full volume, and we're going to use this one, this three-panel MPR, and it's going to come up with this display. And then we're going to launch eye crop, and it's going to show us these boxes superimposed over the frontal and the lateral. And we will adjust these boxes using the touch key and the trackball, size, position, rotation. And then we can choose which side of the box to look from. And we can get beautiful pictures like this. That's from the same patient. Okay, this is the right-sided view. Here's a huge ASD, common AV valve, and the RV VSD, RV on view of the VSD. Here's the LV on view of the VSD. Here's our frontal four chamber. And here's the atrial on view of the common AV valve. This is anterior bridging leaflet, posterior bridging leaflet, and the aorta is sitting right here. The eye crop is wonderful with full volume for AV septal defects. For VSD, here's some nice examples of paramembranous VSD, left on FOSS, right on FOSS views, and a four-chamber view. These were older pictures which we used full volume and that straight up XYZ cropping, cropping from the left and the right. Nice examples of paramembranous VSD, and here you see them in motion. This is the left ventricular on FOSS view of the VSD. And here we see the four-chamber view of the VS, paramembranous VSD. This is just a small one. Look at this nice on FOSS view of a small paramembranous VSD. And here's the color. And here's the frontal view. Here's a great example of a muscular VSD. So we got a four-chamber acquisition here, and then we've cropped and rotated to various angles and added color to this one. You can see beautiful examples of the on FOSS views of the VSD from the LV side and the RV side. I'm going to go straight through to the questions now. Okay, here's a question that says, your image quality is far better than what I've been able to achieve. Image optimization, so what I would say is that for neonates, I would use the X7. In neonates, sometimes you are limited because their heart rate is so fast that it's hard to get 3D full volume without stitch artifact. It can be done, and you have to be patient and catch them at the right moment. You may need some sedation to get that, but you'll need to use the X7. For 3D TEE, the PEEDS 3D TEE is not yet commercially available. They are working on it, but it's not yet available. We use the adult 3D TEE down to 20 kgs. I do know some people use it to 18 kgs. We have not had any problem using it in patients as small as 20 kgs. Keep the gains low. Keep the compression fairly low. You know, use the Vision H and the Colorize 2, and trim your sample volume size as much as you reasonably can to get the maximum volume rate. In smaller children, 
Don't use 3D color too much. It just doesn't work that well. But here's another question. Is Live 3D on Philips similar to Bird's View on GE? I don't know. You know live 3D is small sector, actual Live 3D most of the time. It's focused 3D. Live 3D and 3D zoom. Focus your sample volume so that you don't have to crop. Isn't this old Philips 3D software. No, this is current. The XYZ and adjustable plane cropping are older methods, but still useful. The iCrop is the newer method, and they've improved all these methods. They haven't eliminated any of them yet. So I guess the answer is it's old, improved, and with some new things added, but nothing has been eliminated yet. What are the best references for 3D imaging in a practical sense? I don't understand the question exactly. ASE is working on a website, and there are things on there already. It's called 3D Zone, where they ask for contributions from various people how to do things and present them images. That's a good reference. There are a few books out there that are pretty good. And in general, ASE is the best collection, I think, of any journal with regard to you know, 3D TE and 3D Echo applications. So I would consult those resources. There are classes available, generally speaking, when you buy equipment, they should come with some training classes. And I think it's essential that you do those training classes. Pick the most enthusiastic physicians and capable technicians and focus in on a small group to work on it and get it learned and then train the others who might be interested. Start with a good, enthusiastic focus group.